The Numbered Heads Together Strategy is a small group to whole group discussion structure that allows students to converse in small groups about a teacher posed question. They then share their responses in a random calling fashion, requiring all members to participate and listen to the conversation surrounding the question. The overall process of this strategy has teachers ask a question that students think about individually. The teacher forms students into groups of four, with each student in the group numbering off one to four. The group discusses the question, and then the teacher calls random numbers from each group to share. Each group must begin by acknowledging what the previous group said, followed by their group's ideas. Once every group has shared, the first group will summarize the entire conversation. The teacher can then pose another question, and the process repeats. At the end, the teacher provides a synthesis or summary structure for students to process and demonstrate their learning. Now let's go into detail about how to effectively use the Numbered Heads Together strategy. The strategy works best for lesson topics that lend themselves to good conversations. The topic should contain perspectives or viewpoints that allow students to access prior knowledge, apply new skills and knowledge, create new ideas, synthesize multiple viewpoints, and or evaluate claims. For example, a teacher might be working on a unit about renewable resources in science, and she wants to begin exposing students to the idea that using renewable resources requires a change in production, distribution, and overall cost of creating products. The teacher will write a series of questions that scaffold them through the ideas she wishes them to discuss. A sample set of questions might be, what does it mean for a resource to be renewable? What are the benefits to a business and a consumer when a product is made from renewable resources? What are the drawbacks to a business and a consumer when a product is made from renewable resources? If a business were to move their entire product line to be made from renewable resources only, what might that process look like? Would the cost of the move to renewable resources for a company be worth it? How might the government persuade or support businesses in moving to renewable resources? The teacher will type each question into a presentation tool large enough for everyone in the room to see. It is important to point out at this time that some teachers might wonder why they can't just ask the question to each group. It is important any time that a teacher is posing a question or providing directions to students that he supports students who are not strong auditory processors and vice versa by both reading the question and putting it up for them to see. The teacher will then arrange the room to allow students to stand in groups of four. The strategy works best when you have established group discussion norms and expectations. Because of the individual accountability and immediacy of feedback, this is a good beginning discussion strategy to use with your students. Once the teacher has established his expectations and set up the topic with students, he will pose the first question while they are still sitting in their seats. He will point to his temple or chin and remind students that when he is pointing here, it is thinking time, not speaking time. The teacher will allow a suitable amount of think time and then put the students into standing groups of four. The students will then number off one to four within their group. It is acceptable to have two number fours in a group if there are outlier students. The teacher will then set a visual timer for the groups to discuss. She will tell them at the end of time that she will call a random number from each group to share so everyone should be actively participating and listening to the conversation. If a class struggles with beginning a conversation, the teacher can select which number in each group will begin the conversation and provide a sentence frame or series of frames such as, this question initially made me think that, or one idea that I considered in response to this was... At the end of the time, the teacher will instruct the groups that they are now going to share ideas with the whole class if their group and number are selected. In order to promote active listening, 
and the foundation for engaging conversations. The teacher will instruct students that they must first acknowledge the ideas of the group before them using a sentence frame such as, when the last group said, it connected with what we were talking about, or I heard the last group say, but we had the idea that, the teacher will continue to call on groups randomly with a different number called for each group. Consider a quick randomizer or set of cards numbered 1 to 4. Once all groups have shared, the first group that shared will now summarize the entire conversation before the teacher will pose the next question. Remember, when posing the next question, the visual cue of pointing to his or her temple reminds students that this is their think time only. At this point, the teacher can shuffle the groups or keep them the same. If the groups are shuffled, students need to number off again. The teacher repeats the steps until all questions have been discussed and summarized. When students are finished with the discussion, the teacher will send them back to their seats. At this time, the teacher will give the students some type of summary or synthesis activity for them to individually process and demonstrate their learning. This could be a $1.50 summary, a retrieval practice grid, a series of sentence frames to complete, a sketch note so their takeaways, etc. Refer to the Active Learning Experiences website and or the Instructional Strategies Continuum for more ideas.